Um, what an amazing opportunity to be here with all of you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Matisse, for hosting this. And having the vision to think of such an exciting exhibition. I've never heard of an exhibition where we're responding directly to artworks that was created so long ago. So I feel really privileged to be a part of this. Um, that meeting with Dr. Spicer was amazing. Like Martine said, it was two hours long. And she was that intense the whole time. Just getting so excited. I love people who are passionate about what they do. And she was definitely passionate. If you haven't seen the exhibition yet, you need to get out to the Walters and see it because they correlate really beautifully. It's kind of fun to start here and go there and then come back and bounce back and forth. Um, during the lecture, as you can see, I was pulled to this image because um, it was created by an artist that hadn't actually been to see the pyramids of Giza. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. So they got the, the sphinx she was telling us. They thought that she was just a bust. They didn't know that it was a lion's body under her because there was sand covering this monument at that time. And there was a lot of confusion about the height of the pyramid. Um, you couldn't get the scale of how massive they were. But in this time, obviously, there was no internet. The encyclopedias weren't um, detailed. And you had to trust what the explorers went, and then they came back with information verbally. Um, and this is a, a document of the Sphinx to the left and what a pyramid would look like. And they put a door there, but you couldn't really get the scale of that. And so I created this image um, working at Morgan State University using their large format printers, was able to modify the image, print it on archival paper, and then do a model print on top of that. That's what you see the, the vibrant color here. It's called Do You See What I See? Mm -hmm. And it's a, a play on thinking about where those people were, who saw what, what you brought back, and what that meant. Um, and I thought about when I was creating this work, what it would mean, what those colors looked like at that time, and how we don't have access, obviously, to color prints or black and white prints or anything. Um, just the hand and the sketches of artists at that time in the Renaissance. And so it was a spiritual uh, process to bring these bright and vibrant colors of now and put them into a document that is so um, ancient and beautiful and also kind of misguided at the same time. And um, I'll go to the next one. The next one is called Actual versus Factual. She talked a lot about map making and how when, when um, European explorers were traveling Africa, they had to take the Nile. And um, sometimes they couldn't get that far down because either they were unwelcome or the charts weren't passed yet. Um, and so you can see to the left, the border got kind of messed up. People didn't really know what was where. Um, you can see actually on this piece, you can kind of look through the color and see um, where they saw, thought Asia was, where they thought parts of Africa were. And it was all messed up. And I thought about what is actual versus factual. And I took a stencil before I did a monoprint on this piece, um, manipulated and printed on the same the same process as the first one. And I wanted to, so you can see, it says factual backwards here, actual forward, factual backwards that way, and actual this way. Um, you might not see that if you just walk by it, or you might see a few letters, I mean, um, letters, but this is supposed to be a map of the world. Um, and when I'm teaching, one of the first questions I ask my students are, okay, tell me a fact, one fact. And I go through the process of breaking down what that information means, for instance, a border or uh, com a conquest of a nation or a country or a continent and um, how we put value and ideas um, onto different places and people and then we make facts up about them. But if we don't challenge them and have the opportunity to do that, um, 
we can get there can be some confusion, which is why some of the letters are backwards. So um, I thought that was really interesting to have a map that turns out to be totally different than the way that we see the world today. And it's about who is creating the map um, and to have the opportunity to uh, explore and open up those ideas as a descendant of perhaps some of the people who were involved in, in this map and touch this map. Um, I think that's pretty amazing. So we're going to do questions later, right? Yes. Okay. That's all I have for now. <laughs>